Ladies and gentlemen, please take your seats for this year's National Book Award ceremony. To present the National Book Award in Young People's Literature is Gary D. Schmidt. Now, I did my due diligence on Mr. Schmidt, and I could not find anywhere in Wikipedia or elsewhere online what the D stands for, but I did find out that one of his hobbies is cutting and splitting wood. In addition, Gary D. Schmidt is author of the Newbery Honor and Prince Honor winning novel Lizzie Bright and the Buckminster Boy, the Newbery Honor winning The Wednesday Wars, and OK for Now, a National Book Award finalist in 2011. And it gives me great pleasure to introduce Gary D. Schmidt. Good evening. Over these last few months, I have had the privilege of being the chair of the committee organized to choose the National Book Award for Young People's Literature. In these months, we read something over 325 books for young readers, ranging from picture books for the very young reader to paranormal books for the young adult. Lots and lots and lots and lots and lots and lots of paranormal books for young adults. It was a remarkable journey, and along the way we found books that shook us, that filled us with joy and gladness, that summoned us to courage and to wonder, that used language in astounding ways, that surprised us with what narrative could do. Or to put it in the words of St. Augustine, we found books that brought beauty into the world of our young readers, and that brought knowledge and understanding into that world and that brought wisdom into that world. We found books, and this, says St. Augustine, is a book's greatest virtue. We found books that served their young readers in deep and moving ways. And thus, we found our five finalists. These were the others who took that journey with me on that road. Judith, Judith Ortiz Kofer, Susan Cooper, Daniel Aaron Haft, Marley Yeomans. <laughs> Judith, Susan, Daniel, Marley, I tell you the truth, it is one of the great honors of my life to have been a part of this committee with you. I knew I would find wisdom in you all. I never expected to find friends. Thank you for your labors in this vineyard and for your high and noble courtesy and kindness, for your belief that writing for young people is so critically important for our culture. In such strangely troubled days, working with you has brought me back to hope. Thank you. The five finalists for the National Book Award for Young People's Literature are William Alexander, Goblin Secrets, published, published by Margaret K. McElderry Books, an imprint of Simon & Schuster Children's Publishing, a wholly original fantasy about masking and finding. Carrie Arcus, Out of Reach, <laughs> published by Simon Pulse, an imprint of Simon & Schuster Children's Publishing, an achingly honest story of the lengths of love and loss. Patricia McCormick, Never Fall Down. <laughs> Published by Balzer and Bray, an imprint of HarperCollins Publishers, a harrowing and bravely told story of survival and resilience during the time of the Khmer Rouge. Elliot Schrafer, Endangered. <laughs> Published by Scholastic Books, a story of hope through love and empathy that extends beyond all boundaries, even those that lie between species. Steve Scheinkin, Bomb, the race, the race to Build and Steal, the World's Most Dangerous Weapon, published by Flashpoint, an imprint of Roaring Book Press, a riveting thriller of a book 
that tells of the birth of a new age. To all these writers, thank you. Thank you for your work. And thank you for what it will mean to young readers in our nation. This year's National Book Award for Young People's Literature goes to William Alexander for Goblin Secrets. Okay, we, we, we now have proof that alternate universes exist. Um, there is one, there's absolutely one, there has to be, where Endangered takes this home. There's, there's actually one a little further away where it was written by a bonobo author. Um, I think it won it both times. Um, there's, and just another step, just another little step sideways from where we're standing, uh, out of reach, out of reach has to take this home for creating such substance out of such a wrenching absence. And this moment, just a little, a little step away from where we are, we're also being reminded of the devastating importance of narrative in Never Fall Down. And if we exclude um, that set of Earths already destroyed by the bomb, um, and instead only consider the set that survived to this night, then a great many of those has the bomb taking this home. But uh, we, we happen to be here. <laughs> and I happen to write fantasy. And for the importance of that, um, I have to defer to Ursula Le Guin, as everyone should, of course, um, who I believe has one of these at home. <sighs> and she tells us that the, what did she say? The literature of the imagination is important because it gives us a world large enough to contain alternatives and therefore offers hope. Because the way things are is not the only possible way that they could be and we have to know that. We always have to know that. We have to remember that. And stories are the very first way we learn that. It's the very first way we figure that out. So thank you, Karen. Thank you, Joe. Thank you, thank you, thank you, Alice. Congratulations to my fellow finalists in every single possible version of our world, and thank you all for joining me in this one. <laughs>